that is what is strange about a park. Out in the open, people sit cooped up within themselves. You can't even speak a word of comfort to anyone. You look at them, they look at you. Maybe this in itself is some sort of a solace. It may be the reason why people tired of the loneliness of their rooms come out in the street and go to a public park or a pub. Even if there isn't anyone to comfort you out there, at least your grief moves and turns on its side. Please don't misunderstand me. I'm all right. I'm not unhappy. I come only for the sun. If you speak, then you only say about yourself. Uh, you have to listen, uh, not merely to the people, but you have to listen to so many voices, uh, the nature, the trees. I mean, there's so much happening around you, not merely in the human world, but in the non-human world. And I think if a writer doesn't have this deep curiosity, I'm not talking about patience that he should put himself under the discipline to listen. But it should be a natural innate tendency to know what is, all, what is it all about. Nirma lives alone in a small room on the terrace of a house in Delhi. Although he's now settled in India, he spent many years living and working in Czechoslovakia and traveling in Western Europe. In Europe, in many parks, in many pubs, in many restaurants, there are many lonely people that you don't see in India. In India, the domestic life is so well made that people do not go out to escape their loneliness. But in Europe, I always used to find, find people uh, who were very, very eager to talk to uh, you. And if you are a patient, sympathetic listener, well, not that you are going home to write a story about that person, but somehow these uh, stray conversations ultimately leave an imprint uh, in your memory. And if you find that it can all click into a certain situation, then you start, I mean, it triggers off uh, in a certain direction and becomes a story. Nirmal Varma is one of our most significant writers writing today in Hindi. He is a writer with moral force. And that moral force comes out of his conviction in, uh, in the human values and he is always worried about not only a particular class of Indian society but the whole world and the destiny of man. And you will find an anguish about the human condition and with anguish and there is another element he always writes with passion i sometimes wonder how the things which affect us deeply elude our grasp we can neither understand them nor speak to anyone about them i ask you can you recall the moment of your birth or tell anything about your death well, I have always thought, I have always been fascinated by uh, the solidities of Shakespeare or some of the, uh, um, some of the very, very mo long monologues of Virginia Woolf's <coughs> novels, like The Babes. And uh, uh, I always felt that men in the most extreme situations begin to talk to himself. Um, that is the uh, essential uh, philosophy of his soliloquy when you are a, 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 you, you feel that you are the only person who can understand these very obscure and complex feelings under the stress of a certain situation if I have to describe his short stories the one formula is memory is the seed of his narratives and the one title could be given to all the short stories, that is, Remembrance of Things Past, which is unique to Nirmal. 
and nobody in Hindi has done like this. With a sigh of relief, he sat down on the bench in the corridor. The old man would go to sleep soon, hopefully. He wanted to go in and fetch his cigarettes. His mouth had gone dry, but instead of getting up, he stretched out on the bench. His patient wasn't asleep. When he did go to sleep, he could make out at once by his breathing. Waiting for him to fall asleep, he often wondered, does he wait as well? In any case, both of them stayed awake. The whole business seemed absurd at times and he would think, if I go back to my town tomorrow, it will make no difference whatsoever. The brother wired him in panic, thinking they should be all together when they came. Now they were together, together waiting for the end without him. It shows a few days in the life of father and son in a hospital. And uh, the father on the one hand feels deeply hurt and injured by the fact that he who was so omnipotent in certain circumstances has become merely a helpless um, person in the hands of his son who was somebody whom he used to protect and look after as a father. And sometimes ridiculous things happen when, for example, the father wets the sheets. He, uh, instead of feeling insulted, he tells his son, well, you know, when you were young, you used to do the same thing. A certain subterranean uh, sort of a conflict rages between the two persons through a series of events. The old man's voice had dipped low. He looked at him in the dark. The breath was suspended in the space between. <laughs> His body was warm like trees after a shower. The limbs shuddering and the veins stiff like tangled twigs, trapping him, choking him, his own body splitting up like a straw in his father's ancient trunk. difficult to narrate the entire story, but the various moments of this uh, unhappy, anguished outbursts, sometimes on the part of the boy and sometimes on the uh, part of the father, uh, I've tried to capture in the story. Though there is also a feeling of tremendous remorse in the heart of the boy. You see, the Hindi title of the story was in the middle of the argument, because the boy wants to elicit the source of discontent and anger which is there rooted which is rooted in father's conscience. He doesn't want his father to die before he 
uh, makes a complete and a total statement why he has been so ashamed and uh, uh, worried about his children. The old man looked up at him, blinking. For a long time he looked at him vacantly, then slowly he spoke in English. I am ashamed of you. Did you hear that? Or shall I repeat it? It's not just today. I have always been ashamed of you. Of you all. जहां से आप कहीं भी जा सकते हैं यहां से आप कहीं नहीं जा सकते गॉड को The nurse stood at the door, looking at two interlocked bodies. For a second she could not distinguish the visitor from the patient, 